Looking at the middle-aged man, who had a pale face, Aiden sighed in his heart. As the saying went, every family has its skeletons in the closet. Aiden had originally thought that Charlotte coming to visit Owen's house might lead to disaster, but he had never expected it to be that bad. After all, they were family. But aside from what Aiden had thought, the days that Charlotte and her family had spent with them had been indescribable. At first, Charlotte's decision to marry him, despite her family's opposition, had really moved Holden. In order to live up to her favor, Holden had worked day and night, making great progress in his business, and finally making some important foreign business connections. But once you reach a bit of success, it's easy to drift away from your initial goal. It might have been that after a long, hard time of working, Holden had begun to expose his true nature after gaining some traction. He began to spend too much, indulge in copious amounts of wine, and secretly hire prostitutes. He spent less and less time at home. His concern for Charlotte was less and less as well. That previous night, Charlotte had been feeling pessimistic and admitted to Aiden that she suspected Holden was cheating on her. At the same time, she had a problem with Holden's parents and their attitude toward her. At the beginning, they had no idea of the marriage. Then, even after they got to know her, Holden never took her to see his family because she had come from a less wealthy background. She didn't meet the high standards the Guilfords had for their son. Their resentment for Charlotte built up over time. In the meantime, Holden would often take Ryland to visit his hometown without Charlotte, without giving her a second thought the entire time. Those long trips had left Charlotte home alone, spending many nights in tears. She had long given up on ever being able to repair her relationship with Holden and his family. But yesterday, seeing Aiden's ability to put Holden in his place, Charlotte had felt hope in her heart for the first time. So she had turned to Aiden that night to help her out of her predicament. Did you know, Uncle? My aunt used to be known as the most beautiful member of my family. Aiden's flat tone scared Holden so badly he jumped. He did not know what Aiden meant by that, but just out of fear of Aiden, he subconsciously nodded. Aiden continued, The years haven't been kind to her. Now she has a lot of wrinkles on her face that she shouldn't have at her age. She must be having a hard time in Hampton. Aiden's quiet words made Holden feel colder and colder. How... how can... A bead of sweat appeared on Holden's forehead. He did not dare to reach out to wipe it, but let the salty sweat flow into his mouth and along his trembling cheek. Aiden looked out to the brightening sky, speaking both in an oath and a warning. Charlotte is a Dale family member. She's one of us no matter what. We have never hated her, have always seen her as an inseparable part of our family. If I were to find out that she had been wronged in any way by anyone, that person should be afraid. Holden was frightened by Aiden's last words and fell to the ground, raising his hands and swearing. You don't have to worry, I will do my best to take care of her. If Holden broke that promise, Aiden would find out. He would come for him. Charlotte, holding Rylan off to the side, quietly burst into tears. That morning, the three members of Holden's family left the Dale house. However, Holden's attitude towards Charlotte had already undergone a 180 degree change. As they left, Charlotte nodded slightly to Aiden in gratitude. Aiden smiled back, happy to see his aunt, in a way, reborn. Rylan leaned out of the car window and said with a smile, Cousin, you must remember to visit me in Hampton. I still want to learn from you how to speak to Pinecone. Aiden smiled and nodded silently. Under the sunlight, accompanied by Pinecone's unruly wolves, the blue Passat slowly drove away from Langley. Gradually, all the other guests and visitors also left Langley one after another. Finally, the family's relationship with Owen relaxed. Aiden had wanted to stay in Langley for more days, but Owen himself convinced him to leave. Aiden knew that although Owen liked this kind of family happiness, he was reluctant to see his youthful family waste their time in Langley. Helpless to his wishes, Aiden and his family quietly packed up and returned to the Bayside District in Arkland City. But before leaving, Owen made a surprise decision. What? Dad, what do you mean I should go with Aiden to Arkland City? River looked at Owen in disbelief and said with a worried face, No, no, no. No one will take care of you when I leave. Silly girl, I'm still strong. Do you really think that I need you to take care of me? Owen said the sentence with a wisp of unshakable pride. Besides, I don't want to continue to stay like this in Langley. River gasped and asked, Dad, 
Are you coming back to the city with us? Owen nodded. Everyone stared at him confused. I'm going to travel the world. Those four words were the most shocking thing that had happened all week. Are you kidding me? Amy's mouth twitched. Grandfather, you're going to travel? It will kill you. Hey, how can you talk like that, kiddo? I can walk, I can run, I can eat and drink, and I can think for myself. Why can't I travel? What is it you young people say? The world is my oyster, Amy. I've seen so little of it still. After that, there was a long back and forth. But everyone soon realized that not even a herd of cattle could pull the stubborn Owen Dale in another direction. No matter how many people tried to persuade him otherwise, he was determined to travel with them. With no other choice, Aiden sighed and asked Owen to simply let them know if he ever changed his mind and needed to return home. Once Aiden, as the backbone of the family, had given the idea the go-ahead, everyone else gave up the fight as well. Owen displayed a victorious smile, laughing for joy like a little kid at having worn his family down. That afternoon, after everyone else had left for Arkland City, there was a moment in which Owen's face suddenly became very serious. That serious expression was also twinged with a faint sadness. He turned back to the house and rummaged through the cupboards. When he came out again, he had changed into a brand new getup. He was now in a mountain gearing suit with dozens of pockets and carrying a camouflage backpack with three pockets on the inside and three more on the outside. He wore a multifunctional fishing hat and flip-up sunglasses. Even the crutches that he usually leaned on had been modified so that now, a compass dangled from the side of one of them. The compass was the size of a palm. It was covered with a golden sheen and had a black edge. The middle of the disc was engraved with an intricate design that looked like ocean waves. An ancient bronze pointer stood firm in the viewing window. Owen looked in the direction of the pointer and sighed. Countless people have told me that I can't change my fate, but I don't accept it. Aiden, because of you, I believe again. Even if my chances are slim to none, I'll try and succeed or I'll die trying. He murmured this to himself while taking a paper bag from his backpack. When the bag was opened, he saw there was a little bit of oily beef jerky in it. He tossed a handful of it into his mouth and smiled, satisfied. When he left the courtyard into the sunset and then finally left Langley, he was quite vigorous. There was not a trace of his age in his step.